Hello and welcome to Freight Waves Now, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors. We are bringing it to you live on this Blue Monday. Or is it a Blue Monday? Well, we're going to let Zach Strickland, Sultan of Sonar, tell us about his emotional state and the state of the market share na uh, nationwide. And we're going to be talking about volumes and are they continuing to go up here at the beginning of March? And how do they cross compare to Tinder rejections according to our sonar data? Uh, and you know, like who should be taking advantage of these opportunities? Should it be brokers? Should it be shippers? Should it be carriers? Or you know, who's going to take their market playbook and apply it uh, to the best of their abilities? And also we have chief meteorologist Nick Austin on right now to tell us what is happening right now. So what is happening right now? What's happening right now? There's really not a lot happening right now, which, what? Is, which is actually good news. Oh, there are snowy and slushy roads out there, but there's not a lot of snow falling at this hour. That's the good news. It's been fading across New England. There was a lot of snow last night along parts of the I-95 corridor. Sure was. Boston and even a little bit of snow in Philly and New York, but that's been winding down all day and uh, still have to be careful out there. There's still there are going to be still a lot of slick spots, but there's not really, there aren't any large areas of really impactful um, precipitation today, which is a good news. But yeah, there is a ton of absolutely bitterly cold weather that's going to be sticking around across the Great Plains this week. We're talking about wind chills again tonight that could be 20, 30 degrees below zero or colder from wow. Mon Montana all the way to Michigan. And even down in the parts of the plains in Iowa, Nebraska, and even northern Missouri. That is it the southward. return of the polar vortex? It is. It is. Yes, for a little while. Oh yeah. boy! So, um, so those areas will be really cold. So, just drivers that have to go through those areas of the Great Plains, it's going to stay cold all week, and we're not going to see below zero temperatures and wind chills all week. But temperatures, even as they begin to warm up, quote unquote, yeah. uh, later in the week, they'll still be well below normal for this time of the year. So. Use plenty of winter additive, at least enough winter additive in the diesel, so we don't get fuel gelling. Uh, there might be, you know, might run into delays with some brake failures, that kind of thing, but just keep your trucks running as much as you can because it's gonna be really cold across those areas. So that's really what's happening today. That cold is gonna last all week, but the coldest is really going to be today and tonight across those areas. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the good news, yeah. the good news, bad news, <laughs> such as he calls it uh, each and every day. Thank you, Nick Gostin. You know, uh, pretty much we're all going to be cold um, uh, right now, except for, fortunately, the ball players uh, in spring training down in Florida. They might, you all down in Florida might be a little warmer. Congratulations. All right. <laughs> uh, Zach Strickland, Sultan of Sonar, what do you have to lead us off with, sir? All right. So we were talking, we were excited last week. <clears throat> we were really excited because the volumes, if you recall, yeah, you, went you up over 10,000. Uh, yes. Well, they've actually kind of stayed elevated. But a lot of that volume, the thing that was exciting about it is that it came from all over the country if you will. Okay. Uh, we, we'd been seeing this big giant pile of freight coming out of uh, Los Angeles for the longest time. It really kind of okay. like drugged the market with it in the fourth quarter of uh, 2018. Well, last week we kind of saw this map kind of light up a little bit with blue, if you will, for Blue Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but this week we're kind, of, we're kind of returning to this pattern, even though the volumes are still up nationally. Uh, we have a few little spots here. This is the outbound tender market share map, by the way. So what right. this is doing is giving you kind of a relative volume uh, view of what's going on in the overall market. Like where are the volumes increasing in relation to the rest of the country? Where are they decreasing? Red decreasing. Blue increasing. So blue is actually good news. Yeah, uh, whether you know, Monday, it's a blue money, but there's yeah. a good blue yeah. kind of because thing. Because we want the freight market to have a lot of volume in it. We want it to be, you know, we want things to be moving. That's how, that's how things happen. So <laughs> anyway, the Los Angeles market, Ontario market, Fresno area over here, these are all starting to pick up volume. Uh, this has been where the story has been almost the entire, like, I don't know, eight to nine months of the last uh, period of time. Yes. And then we have the Midwest kind of picking up again, too. What we're really not seeing, you've got Chicago uh, losing a little bit of value. And then Atlanta. Atlanta Why still is... has not shown up 
in terms of volume. I'm surprised year. that both Chicago and Atlanta and a little bit disappointed. Yeah, well, these are these are the biggest markets in the country. Los yeah. Angeles right now, this area right here with Ontario is the biggest. Uh, they have over 8% of the overall market volume. Uh, Atlanta averages around 4 to 4.5%. Chicago right around 3 to 4%. Um, so these are the big markets. That's why we watch these is because those are going to be the areas that have the most significant impact on national capacity. So what does this tell us that these are still weak markets well, as it, large what it's as they telling are? Us, yeah, what it's telling us is that actually these markets here are not carrying their weight, so to speak. Uh -huh. This market out here is still the, the biggest active region. And what, what that means is that we have a very imbalanced market mm. uh, in terms of if things were to start picking up in Atlanta, for instance, or Chicago, or anywhere else in the country, you've got all this capacity sitting out here on the West Coast. And they're just moving intra-regionally, sitting out here bouncing around. And if anything else starts to pick up over here, which it did uh, last week, we started to see some of these pockets really start to pick up. Well, now over the week, and we've seen this kind of return to West Coast volume. Is it an intramodal thing where, you know, not, not enough is happening on the East Coast for whatever reason? Like the Savannah port might not be, the, the fourth largest port in the country isn't getting enough I it's, mean, what, what's, what in the world is well, going on? I know we've talked about it ad nauseum to the point where I don't know. Getting ahead I mean, of the tariffs. Yeah, the China. tariffs and the containers and everything. Savannah did have a lot of volume, uh, but okay. simply it's just not near the size of the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports. And that's obviously the first stop on the way over here. So, yes, it does get yeah. some overflow volume, but simply not enough to kind of make a big difference I in terms of distributing that freight throughout the country. Uh, we've got the outbound tender volume index here with the overlaid with the outbound tender rejection index. Wow, have yeah. tender rejections continued to go down? Even as the volume spikes back up over, we've, we're actually 1% higher uh, in terms of freight volume than we were on March 1st of 2018, which I think would be, kind of, would be kind of a shock to people knowing, you know, the market is so stable right now. Um, what do you make of such a low, low number, Zach? Well, I think, I think the carriers, too, have figured out, hey, we've got to accept everything that comes our way. I mean, the market has been in balance. We figured out that we need to be on the West Coast. We figured out there's no big significant events that have been pulling into the market that have really created that instability where carriers are actually able to kind of say, you know right. what, I can use my truck over here now or There's over there. There's a little seasonality stuff cropping up here and there, strawberries in Florida, lettuce yeah, somewhere. But, I, I've, I've... And they're all kind of predictable. There's, uh -huh. not been, there's not been one that's been like out of, out of place yet. Everybody kind of knows when, when to go get the strawberries and the lettuce and all that kind of stuff. Really what we're looking for is a significant increase, you know, because those things kind of sprout up in the course of a week or two. Then the market's caught off guard and you can't do anything about it. That uh -huh. has not happened yet. We're seeing these kind of stable volume flows. And when, they, when volume is available, think about it like a glass. The volume kind of can go to a certain point in the glass and then it starts overflowing. Well, capacity is the same way. And the volume simply hasn't been enough to kind of overflow the glass yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and carriers may actually be missing out on a situation right here as volumes continue to increase in, in, in March. We'll probably see a little bit of that uh, Because Okay, delay. so like, let's just, just by purely analyzing this graph a little bit, and you see how high volumes are, this, the, this baseline of, um, what is the 10,000 mark? No, yeah, about that. And, and so if we notice... How high? Well, it's about as high and healthy as it was even through the heated 2018 that we've talked so much about. But look how high tender rejections were by contrast. So I guess this just has to do with a tremendous amount of capacity has just flooded the market. I wouldn't call it flooding. Now, keep in mind... It's balanced. It's, it's but... balanced, but I mean, certainly capacity has been added. There, there's yeah. no doubt about that. Employment levels and, and orders and all that, okay. and truck orders and everything have been very high over the last several months. Uh, that has definitely been a, a, been a factor. But uh -huh. more than that is the fact that coming out of 2017, the market was just in chaos. You had hurricanes, ELD crazes, and... <laughs> Everybody was just kind of all over the place and scattered. You didn't have this stable run up of volume coming off the West Coast, keep keeping uh, the market. Like everybody okay. saw this volume kind of come into the market slowly. So they just were able to adjust for that slowly. Hurricanes show up, 
two weeks later and everything is completely disarrayed because they don't see it coming. So okay. they have to, they have to, they don't have enough, as much time to react. It's obviously complex and can't just be answered in a simple um, answer, but you know, it's, it's a dramatic change. Yeah. Uh, with those Tinder rejections. Sure. Um, so what do we got here? We got the, we got more outbound Tinder market share. This is what we call the tree, right? Yes, this is the outbound Tinder market share. It's a tree map. And what it is, uh, top left, to bottom right, largest to smallest markets. Yes. Uh, with the percentage day over day, increase, decrease, sitting here in the big bold. And this is the absolute value of the index right here. So Ontario, California, 4.85%. New feature. Yeah. yeah. 4.85% like of the overall market volume. Los Angeles, California, right next door, 3.44% of the overall market. Both have increased since yesterday. So we've had this huge increase of volume in terms of market share in these two markets, uh -huh. which is actually, it's, it's, it's not great because it means that the market itself is still being largely dependent on these areas over here in Southern California. The grayish blue indicates not much is happening. Not a lot of change. It's kind of what gives you the blue Mondays when there's not a lot of change. You like to see the change, right? I do. The, the red chartreuse means it's going down. And we are loading the market with so much potential freight right now. All of these, uh, all these containers that have come into the market, okay. they're sitting out here in the West Coast. They've gone into the Stockton markets, the Phoenix markets, San Diego, all of that for warehousing. Eventually, when demand picks up in the market, we should start to see this start to turn green again. And we did see it green for a hot minute last week <laughs> as we hit the, uh, the end of the month, you know, kind of that normal press. I'm surprised Lakeland slightly down, even with that strawberry festival that should be jamming. Well, a lot of the, uh, the produce stuff, it moves on the spot market. And we largely oh. measure the contract market okay. because the, the, uh, most of the produce, especially when it's coming out of the fields and the harvest, is something that is handled outside of the contract realm. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, we probably, but eventually it will start to show up here if there is enough volume sure. in, the, in the market. So. Yeah, as we've been learning, uh, yeah. the contract follows, can follow the spot. They're related. Yeah, no, right. and vice versa. Yeah, um, and vice versa. Yeah, so you can have these markets, you know, you may not see the actual strawberry harvest here, but say there was a huge booming harvest and it was going to start drawing all that capacity into the market. You're going to start to see them show up here as well. Wow. Yeah. Interesting analysis here coming live to you on what is happening right now. And you have one other chart for us. It's not one, not two, not three, but four charts coming from you today. Four Zach, charts. Zach, you are bringing it. <laughs> four charts today. It's, it's Monday. It's my day. Um, so I wanted to quickly kind of recap. Uh, we had another uh, Trump tweet over the weekend. Oh, over the weekend. Over the weekend. So last week we talked about how he tweeted that uh, oil prices were too, too high. Too high, and they and there was a small impact uh, on the short term uh, to the oil price as as the market, the futures market. Everybody that was speculating has to adjust for that because he does have that kind of influence in the market. Yes. It's well, a this weekend. Tweet. Yeah. Well, this weekend he was like the the dollar's too strong. <laughs> so. It, you know, inadvertently, those two things kind of contradict each other because okay. the way that oil markets operate, the, the dollar value is very inversely tied to oil pricing because of the way that everybody purchases oil with the dollar. So I'm not going to get into the economics of it, but just know that they are inversely related. So if you have a strengthening dollar, you're basically going to increase the price of oil and vice versa. So what we're looking at here is the retail price of fuel overlaid with the uh, rack price of fuel ah. and this this these values have kind of moved you know what we're seeing right now is actually a very flat market a very stable market so the carriers out there that are buying oil shouldn't see too much more pressure either either direction and usually it is uh, the retail price that's kind of reacting, responding yeah. to, to the rack price. Right, right. Right. Uh, and so what are we seeing? Are we seeing, we're seeing a reaction now. Yeah, well, we, that... we were thinking that the market, like last week, the weekly price was going to go down. Uh, and it did for just a minute, but not enough to make a big difference. Because as the spread between these two values widens, okay. uh, they actually, uh, you know, carriers can actually improve their margins or they actually have a negative impact to margins as well. So it was really widening almost to the 14th and now that margin has been closing. It's starting to close and we don't expect a big change in that moving forward over the next little bit. But on the macroeconomic side, yeah. we definitely want 
to watch the, uh, the price of oil because as that goes up, the economy actually comes up with it. So that's actually good news. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is great. So you, you know, you're, you're not a macro economist, no. you're not an economist, but um, you're playing one on TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you again, Zach Strickland. Uh, and you know, to all of our market experts each and every day, bringing it to you live on Freight Waves Now. You can find us on FreightWaves.com and on social media. We love to spread the love, share the love with us. Uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, all those good places. Um, this is what is happening right now. And, uh, you know, we come to you live biz each business day at four, uh, four o'clock Eastern time. So we'll see you uh, today and hopefully tomorrow as well. Stay tuned. Thanks for your support and give us feedback whenever um, you feel led. Uh, in the meantime, don't worry, be happy.